Good morning, everybody. Um, and I hope you're enjoying the sunshine, whether you're in Kirkcaldy or in Pitlochry, because we seem to have a lot of people in Pitlochry. So enjoy the day. Uh, I've got a couple of intimations. Um, the first one is about the newsletter, which we hope will go out at the end of November. Um, so it would be good if you've got an article for the newsletter to get it in um, by the first week in November, because um, Linda has got um, other things in her mind with a special event coming up. And so it would be good to have all the articles in. So if you've got something that you would like to put in, either hand it into the office or um, send it by email, which is preferred. Um, the other intimation is about the shoebox appeal, just to keep that in mind. If you have your shoebox um, completed, these can be handed in at the office um, sometime after 10.30 in the morning, that would be good. Um, I, Cathy, I forgot to ask you what the timing was, but I think by the end of this month would be a good time. Okay. Let's come to worship now um, and the singing of our first hymn, which is Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. The words of this are based on Psalm 103 and I'm told it's become one of the most popular um, hymns in the UK. So it's Mission Praise 560, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. to hand over now to Jacqueline, who's going to lead us in our prayer of approach. Jacqueline. Thank you, Anne. If we would all just like to, to bow our heads in prayer, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you now so that we can worship you. You are an almighty and ever living and ever loving God. You are the one who set the stars in space, who formed the seas and the mountains. Your glory is unimaginable, and yet you desire to live in our hearts. We respond to you with love and praise. 
for you alone are worthy to be worshipped, honoured and adored. In these worrying times, may we be reassured of your love for us. You know our needs and know us better than we know ourselves. Forgive us for the times we feel our faith is weak. Help us to see things with your eyes, to speak with your lips and to love with your heart. You know all our faults and failings, the ones seen by all and the ones we hide. We can be harsh in judging others, but blind to our own faults. We can be quick to look for praise and recognition of what we do, but slow to acknowledge the work of others. Too often we remain silent rather than speaking words of encouragement. As we trust in your forgiveness, O Lord, teach us also to forgive and help us by our deeds and actions to show love for one another. So let us pray now in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So the next song, which you had a brief um, glimpse of there, um, is Come On and Celebrate. It's Mission Praise number 99. It's a lovely, joyful worship song, and I'd have to say it's one of my favourites. So let's take this opportunity to worship God in celebration and praise. Come on and celebrate.
Thank you, Jacqueline, for leading us in prayer. And we're going to hand over now to Linda, who's going to read um, both the Old Testament and the New Testament readings. Linda. Thank you. The Old Testament reading is from Exodus 32, verses 1 to 14, and is entitled The Gold Bull Calf. When the people saw that Moses had not come down from the mountain, but was staying there a long time, they gathered round with Aaron and said to him, We do not know what has happened to this man Moses, who led us out of Egypt, so make us a god to lead us. Aaron said to them, Take off the gold earrings which your wives, your sons and your daughters are wearing, and bring them to me. So all the people took off their gold earrings and brought them to Aaron. He took the earrings, melted them, poured the gold into a mould and made a gold bull calf. The people said, Israel, this is our God who led us out of Egypt. Then Aaron built an altar in front of the gold bull and announced, tomorrow there will be a festival to honour the Lord. Early the next morning, they brought some animals to burn as sacrifices and others to eat as fellowship offerings. The people sat down to a feast, which turned into an orgy of drinking and sex. The Lord said to Moses, go back down at once, because your people whom you led out of Egypt have sinned and rejected me. They have already left the way that I commanded them to follow. They have made a bull calf out of melted gold and have worshipped it and offered sacrifices to it. They are saying that this is their God who led them out of Egypt. I know how stubborn these people are. Now don't try to stop me. I am angry with them and I am going to destroy them. Then I will make you and your descendants into a great nation. But Moses pleaded with the Lord his God and said, Lord, why should you be so angry with your people whom you rescued from Egypt with great might and power? Why should the Egyptians be able to say that you led your people out of Egypt, planning to kill them in the mountains and destroy them completely? Stop being angry, change your mind, and do not bring this disaster on your people. Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Remember the solemn promise you made to them to give them as many descendants as there are stars in the sky and to give their descendants all the land you promised would be their possession forever. So the Lord changed his mind and it did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. Amen. Our next hymn is Mission Praise 37. This is a relatively new hymn written in 1984 by American Marty Nystrom and is based on the text of Psalm 42. Mission Praise 37 as the deer. <laughs> Thank you. 
even though you are a king. You're my friend and you are my brother even though you are a king. I love you more than any other so much more than again used parables in talking to the people. The kingdom of heaven is like this. Once there was a king who prepared a wedding feast for his son. He sent his servants to tell the invited guests to come to the feast, but they did not want to come. So he sent other servants with this message for the guest. My feast is ready now. My bullocks and prize calves have been butchered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. But the invited guests paid no attention and went about their business. One went to his farm, another to his shop, while others grabbed the servants, beat them and killed them. The king was very angry, so he sent his soldiers who killed those murderers and burnt down their city. Then he called his servants and said to them, my wedding feast is ready, but the people I invited did not deserve it. Now go to the main streets and invite to the feast as many people as you find. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all the people they could find, good and bad alike and the wedding hall was filled with people. The king went in to look at the guests and saw a man who was not wearing wedding clothes. Friend, how did you get in here without wedding clothes? The king asked him, but the man said nothing. Then the king told the servants, tie him up hand and foot and throw him outside in the dark. There he will cry and grind his teeth. And Jesus concluded, many are invited, but few are chosen. Amen. Thank you, Linda, for doing these readings for us. And we're going to hand over now to Andrew, who's going to lead us in the reflection on these readings. Andrew. Thanks, Anne. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's nice to see everyone once again on this beautiful sunny day. Um, today we're um, 
going to talk about A Tale of Two Feasts. You've heard of uh, A Tale of Two Cities, but it's A Tale of Two Feasts today. Um, from Exodus, we have the Feast of the Gold Bull, and in Matthew's Gospel, we have the Wedding Feast of the Lamb. Um, both of these passage, passages deal about ignoring God in different ways, and in both cases, they display um, shocking behaviour. Um, first of all, we'll have a, a look at Exodus chapter 32, verse 1 to 14. It's a passage which could maybe be summarised as out of sight, out of mind. Um, Moses is up, up the mountain, um, listening to God and um, receiving God's commands. And while he's up there, um, the people of Israel are feeling that they have been forgotten, that God is no longer there with them. It's a very um, common problem, you might say, to feel that um, if you don't hear God or if you don't see God, that God isn't there in your life. And out in the wilderness, the Jews seem to go a little bit mad. They seem to feel, well, God can't be seen. God can't be heard. His chief servant is nowhere to be seen. Um, so they concluded um, that God was either disinterested in them or that God wasn't there at all. And maybe many people today feel a little bit like that. They can't see God, um, they can't hear him, they don't see any activity of God in their lives, or at least they don't think they can see any activity of God in their lives. And so they draw what they think is a natural conclusion that God simply isn't there at all. It's rather sad that in this passage, um, <clears throat> one of the chief leaders of Israel, um, Aaron, um, behaved pretty despicably and caved in very, very quickly to the demands of the people. It would seem that um, he was forced into asking the people um, to make a gold bull calf. But the very fact that he was compliant showed that he was a weak leader. He may have been Moses' elder brother, but he was really showing poor and weak leadership. And maybe there's also um, something there for us today. Many people who should be in positions of leadership and authority, even in the church, um, don't lead by example. And there was Aaron caving into the demands of the people rather than saying, I would give up my life rather than do something like that. So the people um, make their gold bull and they bow down and they worship it. Um, and Moses gets to hear from this uh, behaviour from God and God tells him to hurry down from the, the mountain um, because they need someone to remind them that God is there. I don't know about you, but I feel very sad when I read that passage. I feel sad about the behaviour of Aaron. I feel very sad about the behaviour of the, the people um, that they should forget God so easily after God had done so many miracles uh, to deliver them um, from Egypt. Um, and I feel sorry that they had forgotten that God was the only God that they should worship. And instead they were putting their trust into this physical object, albeit a pretty golden object, um, but they were trusting it rather than trusting the unseen God who had brought them safely out of Egypt. But maybe there is a case of out of sight, out of mind. We might um, uh, briefly move over to um, Matthew's Gospel now and look at the, the wedding feast, uh, the parable of the wedding feast that we have there. Um, you might say that um, the, the servants of God, um, the prophets were the people who were giving the invitation uh, to the people to come to the wedding feast. Um, and of course, uh, we're told that they were ignored and um, that the people didn't want to come. So the people weren't listening to the prophets of God in the Old Testament. Um, so God sends his, his only son in the hope that they will listen to him. I want you to imagine now um, that you receive a special invitation to a wedding and how that might make you feel. Um, for most of us, receiving a wedding invitation is a wonderful, wonderful thing, and we would never pass up the opportunity um, to attend a wedding, uh, to attend a celebration and a feast. It's just too great a thing to, to avoid. Um, 
even now, nobody would ever refuse an invitation to a, a wedding unless they had a very, very good uh, reason to do so. And um, most people would accept the invitation immediately and would be so happy to receive an invitation, no matter whose wedding it happened to be. But of course, we're not talking about an ordinary wedding invitation. We're talking about something very, very special. This is actually a royal wedding invitation. It's not a wedding invitation of a relative or a friend or even a local dignitary. It's a royal wedding invitation. And it's just not any member of the royal family. It's the only son. So this um, invitation is by royal command. I know that um, when ministers attend the General Assembly, they receive a, a lovely invitation. Uh, it's usually on white card and it's written in gold. And it makes you feel very, very special to receive that invitation. And of course, it's given out um, in the knowledge that that is not going to be refused unless there's a very, very good reason. And everybody going feels this is something very, very special to be honoured. It's a red letter day, so you don't, you make sure that you never um, miss this occasion. So it is um, with the wedding invitation of the king. And he sends out that invitation and strangely, very strangely, he's just ignored. His, his servants uh, come back saying, well, they didn't want to come. They didn't, they didn't feel any interest in your invitation. And on top of that, some of the servants were beaten and abused very badly. And behind that, of course, we're thinking about how the prophets of God were treated so badly um, by the people of Israel in the run up to Jesus coming as the Messiah. So there we have the, the wedding invitation, which is ignored. And what's strange is that the people didn't have something better to do. Um, they, weren't, they weren't receiving any better invitation. Instead, we're told they actually went back to their ordinary business. They just uh, went back to their farms or, or to whatever business they happened to have. Maybe that's a bit like some people today who hear the invitation of Jesus in their lives. They know that God is calling them, but they just ignore that invitation. And they think, I can maybe deal with that later. In the meantime, I'll just get on with my ordinary business of life. Well, like any invitation, it's time limited and um, because the time will come when the feast is ready. And that's the situation that we have um, in the passage in Matthew's gospel. The feast is ready, the, the um, bull has been slaughtered, everything is ready and in place, and the people are expected to come. Well, all that happens is a deathly silence. So what is the king to do if he's got no guests that are to come? Well, he comes up with a rather novel idea. He says, well, if the people who would normally be expected to come don't arrive, let's invite the people who would never expect to be invited. The people in the highways, the byways, the outcasts, the Gentiles. So they all come um, and they're sitting there um, at this wedding feast. But of course, the king spies somebody who's at that feast and he realises that person isn't wearing the right clothing. What is he to do? Well, he comes up to the guest and says, why is it you're not wearing the right clothes? I know that you were invited to the wedding and I know that it wasn't um, you that were invited first of all, but anybody coming to a wedding would be expected to wear the right clothes. And maybe the person who's sitting there says, well, I just didn't have time to change. And maybe we can reinterpret that phrase um, that we are all given time to change by God. The invitation gets extended to each and every one of us, but we are expected to change our lives. We can't just remain the people that we were before we knew Jesus was around. Jesus expects the standards of the kingdom He's looking for an inward change, not, not just a, not a change of clothes. We're not really talking about a, a, a physical change of clothes here. What we're talking about is a change of heart, 
and mind and soul, an internal change. So this person has said, um, I have, I just haven't had time to change. And maybe the answer comes back, well, you've been given enough time. The invitation was given to you and you were expected to respond in, in kind. There's a biblical phrase which is often used and it's, it's the phrase to be clothed with Christ. And that means putting on um, Jesus clothing, the standards that he would expect us to live by. Not wearing dirty clothes in his presence, but wearing pure and spotless clothes. Of course, that's a, a picture image that we're meant to follow, but, but it, it talks about an inward change, an inward change of, of heart and mind, trying to be the very best that we can in the presence of God. And of course, the invitation that we receive is not a, an invitation to a wedding as such. The invitation that we receive as Christians is to gather at the feast of the Lamb, as he is known. Um, when we come to communion, we are gathering around the Lord's table and he's given us a very special, a, a very privileged invitation to come into his presence, to come into his court and to dine with him. And he wants us to respond gladly to that. He doesn't want us to be like the Pharisees who just didn't want to come, who didn't want to change, who didn't want this new saviour who was bringing um, a different message than they were. So we have the very special invitation of, of Jesus, and that's the most special invitation of all. It's a royal invitation. It's an invitation to the wedding feast of the only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. It's an invitation to the banquet of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Who would be stupid enough to ignore an invitation like that? We're now going to um, talk about our priorities or sing about our priorities in the next um, chorus that we're going to be singing. And it's Mission Praise 590, Seek Ye First the Kingdom of God.
And I hope you all managed to follow the Alleluia there, whether you sang it over the verse or not. We're handing over now to Colin, who is going to lead us in the prayers for the people. Colin. Thank you, Anne. Let us pray. God, our Heavenly Father, we give our thanks for your provision for us. Thank you that we may continue to meet online during these challenging times to hear your word, to share in fellowship, that together we may offer our worship to you, our creator. We pray for all of the members of our congregation who are unable to join us this morning. May they be upheld by your mighty hand, comforted in the knowledge that your love for them is abundant. We pray for those in our congregation who are suffering from illness. May their pain be eased by your compassionate mercies. May those whom you have chosen to serve in roles of leadership in your church be guided by your omniscience. And as they continue to face difficult decisions in the month a months ahead, may they be ever mindful of Christ's commission to make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Help them to follow your will. We give our thanks for all those who give their own time to serve others. For those who work and volunteer for the Outreach Meal Service and the Food Bank. And for those that work and volunteer for charities both across the UK and around the world. We remember those who are suffering from illness, both physical and mental. May they find strength and hope in you, God of all comfort. Open our eyes, Lord, to opportunities around us to serve others, ever mindful of Jesus' example of service. May we glorify you by doing so. We pray for the leaders of the nations of the world as they continue to face the challenge of dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic. Presented with difficult decisions that they have to make, balancing the immediate threat of coronavirus with long-term public health issues and economic impact. Grant them wisdom, Lord, that they may consider the needs of all during this pandemic, and may those who advise them be guided by your will. We give our thanks for those working in the hospitals of the world, for the medics and scientists, for those who work tirelessly in research, and for those who have volunteered to test new vaccines. We pray that they may be strengthened and upheld in times of difficulty. We remember all those who provide essential daily services that we use every day, at this time of harvest, we give our thanks for your provision for us and for those who work your land. We pray for those who have not received a bountiful harvest and now face the challenge of food shortages. May their hunger be satisfied. We remember all who are afflicted by conflict around the world. At this time of increasing tension in the Aegean, with the broken ceasefire between Armenia and Azerbaijan and continued unrest in Iraq, Afghanistan and Yemen, we pray that all who live under the threat of violence may know the loving comfort of your protection. We pray that all sides seek peaceful resolution to conflict, that they may choose the path of de-escalation and discourse. We remember those fleeing from war, May they be welcomed and offered hospitality during their time of need. We pray that all may remember that we are created equal in your own image. Lord God, remind us all of your commandment to love our neighbour. Help us to find opportunities in the week ahead to share the gospel and to live our lives in a way that glorifies you. This we ask in Jesus' name. Our Lord and Saviour. Amen. The final hymn this morning is Mission Praise 33 and Can It Be?
Sing with me, and can it be? Colin for such a rich and meaningful prayer and um, we're going to hand over now to Jacqueline who's going to lead us in the grace. Jacqueline. Um, hi there if we just um, do the grace I think everybody more or less knows what to do now but just a quick recap so when you say may the grace 
We hold out our hands like we're getting a present. The love of God. Give yourself a nice hug. And then the fellowship. You can hold hands with the person next to you or reach out to the next screen. So let's all say the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, nice. the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.